Hello there, this is Malay and welcome back to my channel. Well, in today's video, let us understand the exception handling in the Power Automate desktop. Now, what is an exception handling? Well, an exception handling is usually a programming concept that deals with any unexpected or the exceptional event that happens during the execution of the program. Now, when I say a program, it could be a code and this is very well true also for the Power Automate desktop. Here we have the set of actions. So any of the action may also fail. In this case, we need to handle the exception, handle the error so that the Power Automate desktop can gracefully recover and continue the execution or it can inform the business owner or it can inform the IT if there is an issue with the flow with the proper logging. So let's get started. Now just to demonstrate the exception handling, we have a simple Power Automate desktop here which launches the Excel file and read the data from that Excel. And then we have some sales target in the text file. And then it does some operations comparing with the sales target, finding it, replacing, and it is executing some business logic. However, our main intention is to really learn the exception handling. Now, what do we have here is we have launching an Excel with a specific path here. So we do have a file here. Now, what happens if we don't have the file here? So currently we have the sales team file. And that's the reason the flow works just fine. So if I click on run, you will see that we'll be able to launch an Excel because we do have the file and the path. You can see it is launched and then closed also. So there was no exception. Now let me go ahead and cut this and put it inside the TMP file. So now we don't have the sales team file. Now this is the macro enabled file, but not the XLSX file. So let's go and click run. And you will see the exception in the very first action. It will fail. There we have it. We have the errors which says that failed to open the Excel document file related error. So when you double click on this, you see that we have some further details, right? So that's the information that we can get. And if you see closely, the location is very important. It says that the main flow, because you can have more subflows as well. We will see that the concept later. You can also see the line number two itself is having the issue. The action name is launch Excel, which is having the issue. So if the exception is to happen in any other action, we would also have that detail that which line has failed, which action has failed. That's a very important information that we get. So now what we can do is we can double click or we can edit this action. And you will find there is on error. This allows us to handle the exception on the particular action. So when you click on on error, it gives you a few options. One is the retry policy. If you would like to retry the action, you know that sometimes you might want to wait for a few seconds. You know that that's the case with this action. You can go with the retry policy. Now just to demonstrate to you, this indicates that how many times you would like to retry. In this case, we would like to retry three times in the interval. So you can see the interval is in the seconds. So for each of the retry, how long you want to wait. So for example, we would like to wait for three seconds, three seconds and three times. That is how it's going to work and retry. So let's click on save. Let's click run. So it will try to launch an Excel, which will of course fail. And you will see that it's running it's doing its job it's retrying three times so it's waiting for three seconds then it will retry and eventually it will fail because we don't have the instance there so let's wait for that to fail so you can see that now even after attempting to retry three times it has failed and just to see that let's click on run and what we will do is when it reaches and trying to attempt the operation we will put the file back so that it can retry. So I'm putting the file back. It's retrying. And as you can see, the flow should be able to resume now. So you can see now we don't have the exception flow resumed and close the Excel very well. Now let's go ahead and configure something more. So when we have the on error, you must have observed that it shows the other icon. You can see it is retry action three times every three seconds. So this icon indicates that there is an exception handling configured on this particular action. Let's go and edit this and let's go to the on error. 
Now, what we're going to be doing is if you would like to continue the flow run, you can do that. Now, what this means is it will simply go ahead and continue the flow run. So in this case, let's go ahead and save. So it will try three times in three seconds and then it will go to the next line because we have configured to continue the run. Now it would actually fail in the next line because of course we don't have the Excel data instance. But in case if you have such a requirement wherein even if the exception happens, you are all good to still resume the flow to continue executing the flow. You may just want to use that option. But essentially we should be able to really capture the error and handle the exception. So now going back to the edit, click on on error. In this time we will go and select the throw error. Click on new rule and we will set the variable. So let's change the variable to var exception message and you can have your own custom message. So the file is not at the required location. Please put the file back at the location and click on save. And this time what's going to happen is let's just remove our retry options. Let's just go for none. There is no retrieve policy. Let's click on run and that would immediately fail because we have removed the retry policy. And then you can see that there is an error which is default raised. But at the same time, we also have our custom error now captured, right? So this also gives us an opportunity to have your custom message blocked. Now let's add this a little further. Let's go to on error. Now in this, what we can also do is along with setting up the variable, we can also go ahead and run a subflow. Now what we can also do is we can create a subflow and that subflow specifically will act for the exception handling for different actions you can really use the subflow to call when the exception happens. So let's go ahead and create the subflow. Click on it, create a new subflow and let's call it as the error handling flow and click on save. And now we are in the subflow. Now what we want to do is first, we want to make sure that we get the current date and time when the exception happens. In this case, let's go and grab this get current date and time and it will be stored into the current date and time which is just fine. Now after this what we can also do is we can write to a text file. So let's go and locate it right to a text file. File path. Let's go ahead and have a log file created. In this Excel I'm going to go right click new text document. We will just say the error logs and that's the text file. So what we're going to be doing is we'll be writing into the error logs.txt. That's the file path. Text to write. In this case, we're going to be writing the date and time and give some space. And then what you can also get is exception message. So we want to make sure that we append the content and not overwrite the content. Click on save. There is also an action called get last error. You can also retrieve it before this and you can also store this into the last error. That's very important. It will also give you the exception that is coming from the Power Automate desktop. So in this case, we also have the last error. So let's modify this and we can also put the last error, right? So now we have the current date and time, exception message and the last error. Let's click on save. And then finally, we also want to return it to the main flow. We have to call exit sub flow and that is it let's go and click on main let's edit this and run the subflow on the exception so click on on error new rule we will also run the subflow and you will find the subflow that we just created input as an expression no we don't have that so it is just fine click on save let's click run and see that in action so in the launch Excel, we will have the exception. So error handling flow will start. You can see that is an exception that is coming from the next line. So that's an exception that we have got and we should also see that exception should have been logged into our file. So if you open this, we can see it's one KB. Double click on that and we see that we have a date and time stamp. This is our custom message. And then this is the message that is coming from the flow. So this way it really helps you to keep troubleshooting 
keep adding the logs as the exception happens in the flow. Now what if we want a mechanism wherein if the exception happens, I would like to just prompt a message along with of course logging the exception through the subflow. It should just not execute any of these. It should simply go ahead and skip all these actions and just prompt the message. So let's first go ahead and now for that what we can do is add a label. So you can see in the flow control act as the destination of a go to. So let's go ahead and add a label here. So just name the label. We can give the name of the label and just give it as consider it as the finally block. Let's click on save. Let's go ahead and display a message after the label and we'll say the flow had the error. Please look into the log file to know more about the error and that should be it. Now in this case, we will have to configure one more item. Well, in this case, what we want is we really want to flow the continue. So click on continue flow run and then which is the next action to run. So the next action is not really the very next action. The next action is going to be go to label and then select the label since we really have just one label specify that. In this case, what will happen is let's run the flow, which will again, of course, have the exception we will get into the error handling flow and then we'll also directly jump into this finally block label and then it displays the message as we are defined. So this helps you to skip the actions which is very well dependent on the action that you configured because it might really be using the file, the data which is coming in from this action so really want to skip it and then after logging it the exception through the subflow you simply go ahead and have your kind of a finally block which will handle everything when the exception happens and then gracefully exit. Now just to remember that not all the actions has the on error. Usually the actions where you really have some crude operations whether it's to, to do with the files, with the database, with the call of the API, that sort of a thing you will always have the on error but you would have the actions where you don't see the on error. Now what we have seen so far is the action level error handling. There is another mechanism through which we can handle the errors and that is called on block error. If you search for on block, you will get the flow control. Drag and drop the on block error and it will ask you to name the on block error. So first let's give a name file handling and for now let me click save. Now when you do this, it opens the on block error and then it ends the on block error. Now, the significance of using the on block error is you can have a multiple actions within the on block error and if any of the action fails, you will be able to handle and work with the exception. So this is not the individual action level error handling. This is the error handling at the block of multiple actions. In this case, we will configure the exception of launch Excel into the on block error. So let's open and look for that configuration. We have the on error and we had noted down this message, which is the var exception message. Let's go ahead and configure the same. If you click on edit, you can also see we have a similar retry policy. You can do the very well same configuration here as well. And this will make sure that the entire block of all actions will be retried. So in this case, let's go ahead and click on new rule, set a variable and the variable is going to be var exception message and that's fine. Then we will also be clicking on new rule, which is run a subflow. We already have the error handling flow. So select that. And then we will say continue flow run and go to label and select the label. That is a very similar configuration. So we don't need the exception handling at this action level. Click on error, clear all, click on save. And you see we no longer have the action level error handling. Let's verify. If you click on edit, we no longer have this enabled. 
So let's copy all these three actions into the on block error. We can also put the entire for each loop inside the on block. You can see you can have a multiple actions inside the on block error. So if there would be error in any of these actions, it will handle it using the on block error. Now in this case, we have a launch Excel and then we have the read text from file. So let us remove the read text from the file from the path. So we have here C drive, PAD, Excel, and then sales targets. So let me cut this and put it in the TMP. So what this means is we no longer have that file here and that would generate the exception. Let's go and click run. It has launched the Excel. It's now going to the exception handler and then it will display the message which is here and it will end the flow. So successfully we were able to handle the error even on the read text from the file. Now let's go ahead and put this back. Let me remove the sales team. Now the first action will fail. So if you now will run the flow, now we'll try to launch and it goes to the error handler, we'll show the message and then we'll end the flow. So you see in any action, if the error happens, you will be able to get the error, work with your error handling flow, and then according to the business logic, perform the next action steps. You don't need to configure on error on each and every actions. You can do it using the block. So I hope this example helped you to understand how do you work with the exception handling at the individual action level and with the use of the on block error. I thank you so much for watching this video.